My desk setup has evolved or regressed depending on your opinion on what I've changed. Now I made a video talking about my desk setup about a year ago now over on my gaming channel Exiled, however I haven't made a video on this channel discussing it and I have made a little tweak overall when it comes to the changes and I thought I wanted to make a video solely for this channel as well. Everything that I discuss in this video as well will all have links down in the description so if you do want to support the channel a little bit uh, then you can always check those out as well. Now as this video is going to be the first setup video on the channel I will also go into a little bit more depth than I will do in the future with the first one being about the Alex draws the most basic draws and the most common ones that you're going to find across the internet but they are the most common because they are very functional and they actually do the job perfectly well and there's no need to replace them I've had these draws for about four years now had no issues had no issues taking them apart taking them over again to the new house everything like that so all in all I can't really complain about these things and as well as that they have good amount of space. Personally, I don't use them tons right now as I cleared them out recently. So all I've got in there is random little bits, everything from an airsoft gun all the way through to just having random paperwork telling me that I need to do my taxes. Then you have what is probably the most important part of any desk setup, which is the top itself. Now I've gone through a few different types of these before. I've had the Ikea ones before. I had three of the white ones, mainly due to my adolescent rage and absolutely destroying them after many different gaming sessions. Uh, and then I ended up moving on to a B&Q countertop. So if you do want one that isn't going to cost you a ton of money, I would recommend that in the UK. Go to B&Q, you can get a countertop for like £120, less than that. They'll cut it up for you into the size that you need, then you can leave with a very sturdy countertop but the one that I've got now is made to be shaped in the perfect manner so instead of getting someone to join it for example separately which can cost a decent chunk of change especially if it's on short notice but in regards to this one it ended up costing I believe about 200 pounds for this and it's all joined together for example so when they came and just did it all together all good all sorted in regards to it though it's a darker color than any of my previous ones which I really like as I wanted to go for that more darker aesthetic and all in all I'm very pleased with it now let's move on to what's actually on top of the desk which first of all is going to be the desk mat this one I bought when we moved and it was the first ever full desk mat that I've actually bought and I've got to say it was an absolutely great idea great purchase and I'm probably never going to use a desk without one of these ever again because this helps so much more when it comes to comfort factor one of the issues that I was having with my old desk was that whenever my elbows were on top of it it ended up aching after a period of time so if I was sat there like for example typing for ages and my elbows were denting into the desk basically it ended up hurting a lot more with this it's a lot softer a lot better and as well it's not slippery so it's all good sadly though the company that i bought this from don't sell this exact size anymore which is a bit annoying however there is good alternatives so i'll put some of them in the description as well but this is going to be the next thing that i'll probably change when it comes to the setup purely because recently i ended up having a couple bits of tea with some biscuits and due to multiple failed attempts of trying to eat them uh, the tea ended up spilling slightly onto the desk in different parts so there are stains on the mat which is not great uh doesn't show up too much unless you're really trying to like look for it but you'll probably see that you can kind of see it it is a bit annoying but most of the time my keyboard kind of sits on top of where they are anyway but yeah next thing to change will be the desk mat i want to find one similar quality to this but not extortionately expensive as what I've seen many of them being. Then you have the Keychron K2, which is my newest addition when it comes to a keyboard. I used to only use the Razer ones, and the sound of this is so much nicer. It is ridiculous in comparison to the Razer keyboards, personally. I completely prefer these. I don't like the metal clanky feel that you get with the Razer ones anymore. But yeah, this is absolutely great. It is going to be, again, one of the next things that I do look to upgrade, purely because I want to build my own keyboard at some point in the future, and I want to do it all from scratch and make one that's personalized to what I want so yeah that's going to be the next main endeavor when it comes to the desk after the mat anyway uh, but yeah overall I would 100% recommend this keyboard for anyone wanting to start out with mechanical keyboards as you can get these for like 95 pounds now I believe when I got it it was 90 pounds it's the plastic one with red switches and sounds absolutely superb I've recommended this to so many people and quite a few people have bought it due to the recommendation and just hearing the sound of the keyboard it's absolutely amazing you can get a metal one as well to give you that more thockier and just deeper sound so you can get that as well if you are interested but yeah all round 100% a great keyboard for a great price when you consider a lot of Razer keyboards will cost you probably about 140 ish pounds this costs like 90 pounds 
and then you can find them on deals all throughout the year for even cheaper than that so yeah all around great purchase then you have the two mouses that i'll have in use every now and again with the second one but the first one is going to be the razor basilisk now this mouse is great however one of the main issues that i have with it more than anything well the two issues is it's micro usb charging which you know very outdated port and sadly the other mouse is which is the logitech mx master 2 now that thing is a great mouse great for video editing as well however yeah again micro usb i'd rather have usb c on both of them so i'll probably look at upgrading those eventually down the line right now i have zero reason to necessarily but yeah the other issue that i have with the basilisk is it's charging if i'm honest the battery life on this thing is kind of uh, not that great i end up charging it probably every like four days at this point like even right now as of the time of recording this if i just click the mouse yeah it's 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 yeah it's literally dying right now so yeah i need to put it on charge i'm pretty sure i charged it maybe like three days ago four days ago it's not got a good battery life at all so a lot of the time i end up having to sit there for a few hours with the mouse plugged in yeah i know absolutely appalling issue to have to deal with i know but yeah it's just kind of one of those things that's a bit annoying i kind of wish it did last a little bit longer however there is one other issue that i will just mention just because it's an issue for me personally which is that it's a usb uh connection so if you want to actually do any bluetooth with it you can't just do it with wirelessly for example with the mx master you can pair it between three devices it's paired between my girlfriend's imac uh, my pc no no my pc my ipad her ipad and then as well as that it also pairs to my macbook when i have it in clamshell mode on the desk like it is right there so all round so much better with the mx master that you can just connect that way whereas this it needs that usb port which when you're using way more hard drives than you should be for the average person like i am now for all my video editing issues i have to have tons of hard drives for all of the footage so yeah it's the case that right now it's not great when it's being used up on one dongle when in reality i could just get a mouse that doesn't require it either so yeah it's it's one of those things that's a bit annoying however you have to deal with it eventually now when it comes to the device that i'm looking at for anywhere between 15 minutes to eight hours in any given day sometimes longer than that depending on the editing sessions you have this benq monitor it's 27 inch 4k display and as well as that it's a 60 hertz display now it does mean that for gaming i can't utilize the power of my pc however i rarely play games on this thing so it's not too much of an issue right now and it is the main difference right now for this build so i used to use two dual monitors before that i was using an ultra wide now i could still use two monitors if i wanted to however i found that i really wanted to just change up the setup and i wasn't enjoying sitting at my desk anymore and changing it to one monitor has surprisingly helped in a weird way one when it comes to my concentration levels absolutely changed i don't sit there with like youtube open all the time on one tab whilst i'm then just doing stuff on the other so i'm not as distracted as i used to be obviously i can still make workarounds for it but it's not as convenient when you have two monitors in comparison so yeah overall when it comes to productivity it's actually helped a surprising amount but also just looking at it directly on so much nicer than having them at these two angles that i would have them at where instead of having one direct and then one to the side it would be kind of two lined up in front of me so neither one of them were direct center now the other reason why i chose to use this one instead of the 144 hertz monitor as well is one because it's a 4k display looks a lot nicer and as well as that the color grading the color grading on the 1440p monitor that i had previously is absolutely atrocious it's disgusting i'll be honest if you compare this like monitor to that one there's a clear just a difference in quality it's absurd and the pricing i believe between the two of them was like 50 pounds it's very just insane to think how much 144 hertz monitors can cost and 4k monitors can cost and if you want them blended together how absurdly expensive they can be but yeah all round i would 100 recommend this if you just want a good monitor all round for productivity purposes yes for gaming you can't utilize having 144 hertz or even 120 or even 100 like my ultra wide like yes you can't take all of those things into consideration with this monitor but it looks great does the job really well and for video editing works perfectly for me as i can actually see with this monitor what it will look like on my iphone and as well as that on my macbook which is the primary areas so a laptop and phone all around that people are going to be watching this thing on anyway now we move on to the beast that is actually powering 50 percent of my workflow which is the pc sat right there most of the leds are turned off right now primarily because when i'm let's say uploading a video at night 
this thing just is a light show. It's already a light show with that. Like, it may look minuscule, but I guarantee you that this shoves so much light out, it is ridiculous. Now, I've turned off most of the LEDs, like I said, so it's not as, you know, daunting to see in the background as well videos. However, this thing is an i7-8700 processor. It's an Intel rig as well, just to put that out there if that wasn't obvious when I mentioned it just then. Uh, but you also have a 2070 graphics card. It's an ROG one as well. Uh, it's 16 gigs of RAM, a one terabyte SSD with a four terabyte hard drive. Now this thing cost me around about two grand when I built it back in 2019. And it's done me perfectly well for the last four years. And I can't really complain too too much. Uh, overall, yes, I'd say there is some issues now, which is just that when it comes to video editing, it can be a little bit slow when rendering out things. But also, in terms of like with blue screening issues, so I've ended up having it crash probably like four times a month at this point. It will just randomly crash on me. Normally, it's not in like awful scenarios. I'll literally be watching a YouTube video and it'll just crash sometimes. I haven't had it crash in like a really like required work session. However, I've also had issues recently with Premiere Pro where for some some reason it's just struggling to render out certain things and even just editing i found that it's weirdly struggling every now and again that my macbook completely powerhouses just through all the time whereas this for something that costs two grand and even to build now i think you could probably build it if you were like looking for like everything as really cheaply as possible when you were scouring the internet you could probably build this thing for about a grand 1200 pounds now but yeah all round it's very surprising how kind of poor is now when it comes to how it's dealing with video editing. It's very interesting. But yeah, all round, great build, has lasted me quite a while. This is again another thing that I will eventually look at upgrading. I'm not someone who likes the idea of taking out the parts and then giving new ones in. I'd rather just build an entirely new rig all round. However, yeah, I can't really afford it right now. So eventually that will be a thing that happens and hopefully I'll have something that can absolutely powerhouse any form of editing. Then you have the Nanolite LEDs, uh, which to be honest, I rarely use anymore. I bought them at the time from a friend and yeah, I was using them primarily for the background of a lot of my gaming videos, purely because it gave a little bit of distinction between me and the background. It looked great and actually made the videos look a lot higher quality. But most of the time now, those videos are just gameplay only, none of my face being shown too much. So most of the time, it's just used for lighting purposes of some videos. Otherwise, it's just off. So I don't use them that often. I could probably get rid of them if I wanted to. However, right now, they're kind of useful for lighting. So I'm going to keep them for now and eventually probably move on. Because I've found that, I don't know, I feel like I'm hitting a point where I kind of like just having everything as like minimal as possible when it comes to its design. So yeah. Then you have the third most expensive thing on this desk, which is my mic setup. Now, right here, as you can see, I've got the SM7B. It's a podcaster mic, well, what most podcasters use, and a lot of content creators all around. When I upgraded to this setup from my old one, I ended up putting a lot more effort into wanting to just have the audio quality be great, considering my old mic had issues. It was just giving like random disturbances throughout recordings. So I wanted to upgrade and I was like, if I'm going to upgrade, I might as well go fully for it, get the whole thing. But yeah, this costs £650 in total to run this mic setup, with the mic being about £350, and then the connector that it needs to go plugging into uh, costing, I believe, about £250, and then you've got the cables just from back and forth from that to the connector to then the PC. So yeah, all around about £650. It's been great though, it means that I've got good audio all around for everything, and nobody complains ever about my audio now, so that's absolutely superb. I do use a a Rode boom arm as well just to put that out there which is this one right here that you can kind of see in frame now I was considering maybe upgrading this eventually to like one of the Elgato ones however I found that for podcasts I prefer standing up through them just so that I'm not sat down for like a full hour all the time so it gives me a little bit of option as well to stand up or sit down in recording so yeah for now I'm going to keep this just because it's flexible and to be honest, I'll like, yeah, just be very careful when unboxing these things. These things are very deadly. They will just spring out. Then you have the second powerhouse of this entire setup being the MacBook Pro. Now, I've said this before, which I think this is the best laptop for any form of creator out there, as you can get it for decent deals now. It's the M1 Pro chip, and it's the baseline version of it. So it's 16 gigs of RAM, half a terabyte storage. Absolutely great build all around. I'm so glad Apple released this laptop in comparison to my old one, which was I had the 15.6 inch i7 
like 800 and it was like 2500 pounds from 2018 like that thing when you think about how expensive that was in comparison to this that you can get for like 1600 pounds 1500 pounds so much better and so much more powerful it is absurd one thing that I've always been heavily like contemplating for ages now is this idea of just selling everything and keeping the MacBook, the mic and the camera because I feel like at this point I could probably run most of my stuff through that but yeah it would also require me having to give up the PC and not using all of the hard drives that I've got connected with it so yeah it's a bit of a letdown in that regard but yeah all around this thing is so good that I could genuinely envision myself in the future only using this or another model in the future as my primary source of just device my main powerhouse and this thing is absolutely great when it comes to video editing and all around just render speeds on this thing are absolutely insane this is the silver model as well just to put that out there so i chose this one because i preferred the lighter theme on this one i had a space gray one prior and personally i feel like the silver on this model looks so much nicer it looks so much nicer than space gray in my opinion right now space gray i think has got to a point now where it's just a bit i don't know i feel like it's it's just a bit like much i feel like you see it everywhere everyone goes for it and it's just a bit just dark and depressing now i want something different so yeah i wanted to go for that one have a bit more of a lighter theme or round so yeah prefer that but yeah as well as that you have the clamshell mode like i mentioned earlier so it does plug into the back of this monitor if i wanted to via USB C. and yeah it does great i rarely use it in clamshell mode though most of the time i'm just using it as a general laptop either in bed or i just sit at the desk with it to give me a different typing experience but if you want more information when it comes to this laptop i've made a couple of videos on the channel before that you can go check out as well then you have the next Apple product on this desk, which is the iPad mini. Now I've called this the best compact tablet and I definitely stand by that statement. I don't think there's still anything out that can compete with this size and power across the board. I think it's a genuinely great tablet. Now, in regards to what it's used for, it isn't used for really anything productive. The closest thing to productivity is that I'm using it to partially read my script off of when it comes to some videos. But again, I don't always use it for that purpose. Now, in regards to it, it's primarily used for me playing chess, Sudoku, watching YouTube, and just kind of randomly browsing things from time to time. It doesn't get used all the time. But yeah, I've also made a video about this tablet as well. So if you want to check that out, it'll give you a bit more depth in terms of my thoughts on this tablet and how it is genuinely the best compact tablet. Next up on the desk, you also have some coasters. But the main one that I'm going to mention is just this one here. Just a cool little thing that we ended up getting when we were in Iceland from the lava show, which was a cool little thing to go do. Uh, but yeah, it's a volcanic rock formation thing on uh, as a coaster pretty cool nice thing to add it costs 50 pound for three of these things so it was expensive uh, but yeah all around great little thing to have on the desk it reminds me of going to iceland that sort of thing then we also have the camera which i'm currently using to record this right now so i can't just pick it up and show you uh, it's the eso rp i've made a video all about this camera as well so if you want to check that out go check that one out for more depth but yeah, i use a 24 to 105 lens as well it's an rf lens absolutely great honestly those two combined absolutely great for any form of photography and if you want to do basic videography and make youtube videos it does the job really well as well and then on top of it i also use a rode microphone just in case the audio for example if this messes up i can then put that into an ai generator and just kind of fix the audio uh, but also in regards to it i use it if i'm let's say doing any form of vlog style content uh, then that way i have a mic that's 10 times better than the mic that you're going to get on any of these cameras and then I've got tons of notebooks on this desk and as well as that within all these drawers. I don't use all of them anymore. I mainly only use two of them, which is this one right here, which is my journal, the new one anyway. Uh, and then I've got another one sat just there that I'll show you on the screen anyway, uh, which is an A4 avocado and spice notebook. Really nice quality. It's for all of my YouTube ideas and as well as that all businessy-esque stuff. Everything goes into that notebook for all of its just personal space so that I can just go to that and know where it all is. This one, like I said, said is my own personal journal really nice quality i'll put it in the description as well personally i think this is going to be my main sort of journal moving forward as prior to that i had one that i had from asda the quality of the paper was awful obviously what do i expect from a normal supermarket uh, but yeah all round yeah i've got to say i've got a slight addiction when it comes to stationary stuff if i can buy any form of just new pen or new notebook in particular then i'm gonna do it 
But yeah, when it comes to notebooks, they are fundamental to a lot of my productivity. For example, right now I'm working on my coaching business, which is going to be frostcoachingacademy.com. Uh, you can head over there if you want. I've already got a free document that you can download just for a journaling guide. But yeah, overall working on that right now and I'm using this notebook to go through everything when it comes to my structure on my first workshop through to how the entire coaching business will work so yeah right now that is my primary method of just dealing with things as I don't do well when it comes to just typing it all up I don't find it that useful and I don't remember much of it so yeah I do a lot more on paper than I do over a computer unless it's a video script because yeah I'm not scripting a whole video by hand we also have some books on the desk as well this is a new addition when I changed the monitors down to just the one as I had a little bit of extra space so yeah I'm right now reading through can't hurt me for the second time uh, I've also got dot com secrets on the desk meditations and lastly 12 rules for life all books that I'm trying to kind of read every now and again I've got a few others that I'm trying to read but yeah right now it's primarily can't hurt me is the main focus and then meditations as well those are the two primary ones the other ones kind of sit there to remind me please read these eventually or at least reread 12 rules for life at some point so yeah it just sits there as a helpful reminder for the future now the second to last thing on the desk is going to be the logitech z200s really cheap speakers that i would definitely recommend to anyone who just wants an easy and good pair of speakers to get right now sadly i can't use them as my pc just randomly decided to update one day and the drivers completely just died i then reinstalled them and yeah it turns out the jack plugs just don't like anything anymore so i can't use my speakers and i can't use a plugged in cable for a headset so yeah all round not too great when it comes to that regard but yeah when they were working perfectly fine then yeah they were doing great i've owned these things for like five to maybe six years at this point and yeah the first issue i've had is because of the pc itself not the actual speakers like i said though if you need some good audio i'd highly recommend them they're really cheap as well they're like 30 pounds yeah, you can get more higher quality ones, but all around for £30, you can't really complain with these. Now, the last thing that I'll go over as well is going to be the AirPods Max. They're the newest addition to the setup, and yeah, they sound great. They're very expensive. They were a Christmas present, but yeah, really great quality. I use the Bluetooth version on there, and it's surprising how they're better off on the PC than they are on my MacBook. On the PC, there's nowhere near, if not any, delay in terms of the audio, latency anyway. Whereas on my MacBook, there's probably like a half a second delay, which is really annoying when you're video editing and trying to get the audio just right. So yeah, all round, I definitely recommend these headphones and I made a full video discussing those. So again, you can check that out. All of this will all be in the description. But yeah, great absolute buy that I would 100% recommend to anyone if you have the extra income just to kind of spend on that anyway if not i was using the sony mx3s prior to that before they had a crackle in the ear after like four years of use so yeah either those or the sony's whichever one they're great pairs as well now there you go that is the desk setup for 2023 now i'll probably do another video in the future probably in 2024 when it comes to if i've done any major changes to the setup so like i said i want to change the desk map i'll probably want to upgrade the monitor as well at some point that's something that i'm interested in doing maybe getting like a 32 inch 4k monitor i think it'd be nice to have the big screen for video editing purposes uh, as well as that obviously like i said eventually i want to upgrade the pc i'd love to upgrade the keyboard the mouse everything really could do with a little bit of an upgrade outside of the mic uh, but yeah all round I'm happy with how my setup is right now but once I have a little bit of extra money to be able to spend towards upgrading this setup then it'll do just fine but yeah this is what I use for all of my content creation for trying to run businesses everything like that so yeah does perfectly well for me and if you are interested in any of it like I said all of it will be down below in the description and I'll see you guys in the next video have a good one